Hello, you beautiful lot. Look where I am. <gasps> I'm on Dartmoor. Yes, she is. Oh, look at this. Look at this. It's just beautiful. I love this place so much. Um, so right now, I don't know what day it is that you're watching, but today it is a Friday. And I finished work a little bit early today. Yeah, she's happy. So thought, do you know what? Girl's gonna pack a bag, drive all the way up to Dartmoor, have a little overnighter because look at that sky. And it's supposed to rain for the whole weekend and the rest of next week. So, well, it's as beautiful as it is. I thought I'd head on up here. Alrighty, so I ended up walking a little bit further than I had planned this evening, mainly because the sky is so freaking beautiful, but also because the tour that I was planning to camp at had um, some dude already pitched there. Um, and it's sort of a little bit tour etiquette that you don't pitch where other people are. So I continued going and I'm on Rue's tour at the moment. Um, and I also came across this sign. So I wanted to give you a little bit of an explanation because some people who come to Dartmoor for the first time, they might not actually realize that it's used for military training. Um, and so these signs are dotted all over by flag mass. And at the top, if you see a red flag, it means the military are training there. So you're now entering a no-go area. So you have to skirt around. Um, and usually this is whole sections of Dartmoor. So you might have to skirt around the whole of Merivale or the whole of Oakhampton. Um, so yeah, always check online before you go she says after not checking herself. So uh, yeah, I'm very, very lucky that at the top of this mast is not a red flag right now. I just feel like these two pillars here just seem like gates. Like if you look that side, it's all this rock and that side, it's all this rock. And then you've got these two stacks of boulders it just looks like a grand entrance welcoming me so i always feel like a little princess walking through here just imagining little guards going woo welcome welcome yeah <laughs> ah, what a spot <gasps> literally sunset right there is absolutely beautiful and it's a really nice and sheltered spot as well i'm behind two really lovely boulders so uh yeah unless this little bit here turns into a wind tunnel touch wood that it doesn't i am lovely and sheltered so let's get this girl set up My sleep mat of choice tonight is this one. This is the Thermarest NeoAir X Lite. Um, this is a women's specific mat. It is a shorty, so it's five foot three, I think. Um, and it also has an R rating of 5.4, which makes it an amazing four season bag um, because your girl's a little bit of a cold sleeper. And I know it's the summer months and it's 24 degrees today. Um, she'll get cold. She needs a winter, a winter mat all year round, gang. This is the Thermarest Saros Zero Degrees Celsius bag. So I have got quite a nice warm setup tonight. Um, Dartmoor, the temperature can ebb and flow and always change. There's little microclimates everywhere. And I do sleep really cold. So even in summer, I hike with an ultralight two degrees bag um, and I take my thermals just in case. So that'll just give you a sense of my uh, feelings of cold that I've got. But I absolutely love this one. It squishes down really, really compactly but it puffs up and it, it literally feels like a duvet. Honestly, this is just possibly the comfiest sleeping bag I've owned.
so it's time to cook up some dinner and tonight I am making a one pot cottage pie. This is one of my go-to hiker meals because it is really high in protein and it makes me feel like I'm actually at a restaurant um, because believe it or not in this little 900 mil pot here we will have a cottage pie. So you may be sat there thinking how on earth do you make a cottage pie on a stove Becca? Well I'm about to tell you because this is the best thing ever. In here I have decanted some dehydrated soy mints and you can literally get about 500 grams of this these days for about two pound, two pound fifty and then I've also got dehydrated mushrooms in there um, that I will chop up to add a little bit more chunkiness um, and that all goes in here with the cheat. Not that, that's my lunch tomorrow, that's a mug of soup. This, <laughs> this is the cheat. Here we go, your cottage pie mix. And it's vegan. Look at that. Oh, and the topping. Mashed potato. Powdered mashed potato. When you look at the ingredients like that, it doesn't sound too grand, does it? But I promise you, it is pucker. I forgot to clean my mug out from last time because I'm a skank, apparently. <laughs> Come on, we've all been there. We've all done it. We've all had a hot chocolate or a brew and not cleaned our cups and our pots and we've gone out the next time and realise we're growing our own little ecosystem. You've done it, don't lie to me. I know. Ooh, I actually think I'm gonna put my um, puffy on, you know, it's the temperature's already dropped. It's my Montaigne puffy and it is gorgeous, it's so warm. Oh, I love it. All right, so my first step is going to be to boil up the water and then I'm going to decant some of it in here with the smash, then, with the leftover boiled water, I'm going to rehydrate my mints and my mushrooms. All right, let's lower you down so you can see what I'm doing anyway. Come on. spork again yeah she did so we're eating with 10 pegs and that's fine <laughs> right this is what it looks like anyway um normally i would fill it up quite a bit higher um because i tend to go camping a lot with friends and this is something i make for them when we do our hikes um but as greedy as i am as much as i like food the likelihood of me eating 900 ml of cottage pie with 10 pegs pretty slim so uh yeah we're gonna we're gonna leave it at this but i'll tilt the camera back down so you can see me top it off anyway yeah where's the camera we're gonna focus Cottage pie, mate. Oh, it's good everywhere. It's good. It's good. Quick. Easy. Probably doesn't even cost more than a pound. Well, good. Feels weird eating on camera, though. Not going to lie. <laughs> Especially just shoving tent pegs in my face. <laughs> And to go with this, I know you lot like your craft beers, but we know I like my cocktails and my bubbly, so <laughs> I bought a mini Prosecco out with me. So your girl's got cottage pie and Prosecco on a tour, watching this beauty have a sunset. <laughs> that is good, isn't it? That is good. Here she goes. And I have to drink it out of the bottle like a proper classy bird because this one is full of smash. How rude of me. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. 
this way. Look at that grin. <laughs> that is a grin that makes your face hurt, in it? That's how you know. That is how you know you've had an amazing time. When your face hurts. When you get the creases in the side here. And your crow's feet all jammed up together. You know you've had a good day. Can you hear them? I'm not very good with my bird sounds, but skylarks are one that I actually know. Because to me they sound like laser quays. It's like pew pew. Listen, they're playing laser quays, mate. That's how you know the skylarks. Alrighty, you beautiful lot. The light is pretty much gone now, and I'm all snuggled up inside my sleeping bag, ready. To hit snooze. So I'll say good night and see you in the morning. Night. <laughs>on the route for today yet but I'm thinking of heading up to Langstone Stone Circle which is up that way it's a really pretty sort of crumble down stone circle and possibly across to White Door around Stephen's grave um, and back down however it is Sea Shanty Festival today down in Falmouth and I kind of really want to just dress up as a pirate drink a bunch of rum and sing shanties um, that is so Cornish isn't it <laughs> So just a little bit of an insight into my pack as well. So I'm quite sure I'm about five foot three and I have a really small torso. So most packs don't fit me, even children's offspring. They're just, they're really uncomfortable. But this one, however, was a cheapo from Mountain Warehouse. It was 45 pound and it's 800 grams. And it was their attempt at an ultralight and it just works so well for me. Um, and the pockets on the side are so big and stretchy. I put my tent outside and this is what I really wanted in a bag because if it was raining right now I'd be sat in here sipping on my coffee and I could pack everything in to my bag just sat in here all shouting the sleeping bag, my clothes pack, my therma rest and everything would just fit nicely in and the only thing that would end up getting wet is myself and the tent going on the outside. Yeah, it's a good design, mate. that is me all packed up no trace no trace and the low lying fog clouds just come in so i'm going to head up to langstone stone circle anyway hopefully it might have cleared a little bit by then um if not we'll just head back to the car and that's my cue to uh, become a pirate for the day <laughs> let's go <laughs>so i am on the langstone moor section a bit now and it is just amazing there's all these little stone circles that i'm almost certain would have been used as houses because if i take you over to this one like it actually has a gate in this amazing oh 
I love stuff like this. I proper geek out over stuff like this. I just think, oh, like, I kind of go into that mindset of what were these people doing, like, all those hundreds of years ago. And they've just sat here, chilling out, having a brew. Would they be having a brew? Maybe. Like, people probably lived here. I can't imagine you'd have a gate like this just for animals. So freaking cool, isn't it? <laughs> It's beautiful. It is just beautiful here. I love it so much, so much. I want to take you up to the stone circle as well over here because it is gorgeous. <laughs> White tour covered in white fluffy clouds. Oh, that made me a bit dizzy spinning around in that circle there. Um, but yeah, just absolutely beautiful tour. I wanted to take you up here because the views from this one are really lush, but as you can see, such views. <laughs> but no, it's absolutely beautiful up here. Um, so, so, so gorgeous. And this is another one of the tours that has the flag mass as well. Um, because we're now in a different area. Happy little baby. Oh, and the sun's coming through the clouds as well. I might not stay here all day, actually. Come on. Come on. She's got a pirate to become. Let's do this. curious what's going on here um what is going on is i'm going to fill up some water because your girls are almost out and i'm craving a brew so i'm using the catadin b3 one liter water filter i love this this one's lush <laughs> it started to rain the moment i sit down for this brew the heavens start to open um, but actually it didn't last very long, so I decided to wait out for five minutes and have the brew. Um, I moved away from the stream because where I was going to sit, I actually realised was sort of one of the pony crossings. I just didn't want to be in their way, they got loads of little folds, so I've backed off by this old star wall. Um, nice and sheltered from the wind and yeah, going to have a brew. <laughs> Fog's coming again. Still drinking out of the uh, camping mug because I haven't washed up my actual mug. Full of smash, still. <laughs> um, so the plan for the rest of the day, because the weather's looking like it's going to get pretty bad, to be honest. Um, I'm going to head back down, sort of parallel to the route I walked yesterday along a boundary wall and then head down over Coxtor and back down to Pork Hill Car Park. Um, and there's loads of cute little bits along the way that hopefully we'll get to see, um, but I have a feeling it's low-lying fog now for a while. But this low-lying fog is one of the reasons why I think the military um, used Dartmoor so much, because even in the summer like now, um, it just comes in, mate. The weather changes within the click of a finger. And um, I can click with my left hand, by the way. Changes with the click of a finger. <laughs> um, and yeah, so you really have to be on it with your nav skills. Anyway, the rain has started to, uh, yeah. She's come in now. The rain is here. It's time for me to look like a little plink flamingo. 
<laughs> Get Mooch into the car. <laughs> piste in here because basically I'm pretty sure through these little paths in the fern I can do a shortcut to Cox Tor. Well some humans been here because they left their Tupperware. Put you in the back of a bed shall I? Slide you under there. There we go. That's the top. <laughs> yeah buddy. Last summit. direction anyway still which is good there's no more ferns so happy days Nice, safely and straight back there. So thank you so much for 